Insight has been fantastically successful. We've gotten more science than we had ever dreamed that we would get during the course of this mission. Insight's primary goal was to better understand how the terrestrial planets, the rocky planets, uh, formed and evolved. First, we landed an incredibly sensitive seismometer on the surface of Mars, and with that, we were able to record over 1,300 Mars planes. And these range all the way from tiny little templars that just barely go over the noise background to a handful of quakes that were larger than that. Feeling those vibrations, the scientists can actually take that information and use that to reconstruct all the material that those Mars quakes traveled through and thereby see the interior of the planet. We looked at its core, which is big and not very dense. We looked at its mantle, which is not so hot. And we looked at its crust, which is not too thick and not too dense compared to some of our By measuring the detailed structure of the inside of Mars, it gives us a snapshot of what the planet looked like four and a half billion years ago. The other thing that we've been able to do is to make a very detailed record of the weather in Mars. So we have a really good weather station, which has allowed meteorologists to study the, the weather at the, at the inside landing site and relate that to the climate changes on Mars. What we didn't do, unfortunately, was make the heat flow measurement we wanted to make. Our heat flow probe was supposed to get three to five meters down, and we were unable to reach that depth. But we were able to get some of those measurements, such as the heat transfer amongst the soil. InSight is a solar-powered mission. We have solar panels, and they were designed to give us enough power to easily get through the first two years. But there's a lot of dust in Mars' atmosphere, and that's falling down on top of our solar arrays and slowly blocking the sun. As the panels are getting dustier, we started racking our brain whether there's anything we can do to try to clean off those panels ourselves. And the idea of using dirt to clean the solar array was first proposed to be counterintuitive. We were actually able to use the arm and the scoop to scoop up some soil from the ground and dump it over the lander, having some of that heavier sand blow onto the arrays and knock some of the dust off. So we essentially used it as an array cleaning tool. Cleaning with dirt actually worked. It allowed us to actually keep the instruments going during the low power season where the, the Mars is farthest from the sun during the winter. Unfortunately, later in the summer, we think that the power is going to be dropping so quickly due to uh, the atmosphere getting dustier, due to the uh, alignment of Mars and the sun. We're going to be at a point where we can no longer have all of our instruments on, which means we'll be turning off the seismometer and other instruments on board. The last day is going to be bittersweet. Uh, obviously, we're preparing for it. We know it's coming. But that first moment where we don't hear from the lander when we expect to, that could be tough. tattooed insight onto my arm. I'll never let it go. We've really rewritten sort of the, the chapter of the encyclopedia on the interior of Mars. That was our last big hole in our understanding of the planet. There's a lot of data that people are going to be looking at for decades to come. We accomplished so many of our science goals and we're going to have something to look back on and be proud. <laughs>